Hello and welcome back in the waters. These dogs have twisted together into a huge canopy. Incredible! They are pulsing as the spores across their surface open and close. These canopies are spectacular. I will start with looking observation. Let's see what we can find out about them. These bright white petals appear to be photosynthetic plants. They float on long stems, shifting and swaying in the water. These are beautiful plants, single petals shifting in the sunlight. Let's start looking data on them. These plant-like creatures seem unrelated to the leaf stalks, their soft petals waving on green stems. It feels good to be out in the sunlight again. Let's head northeast along this finger of the reef. The transporter is at the pit. First, let's take a sample. While each plant seems to have a single white petal, they group together from fields of blooms, all angled towards the sun. The factor outcrops all around break up the worst of the northern current protecting the sunny shell. The coloration of these cannabis is much lighter than other stalks. They go pale yellow in the light of these 667cc's free sounds. The petals seem to shimmer as they twist and open. It's difficult to tell if this is involuntary or part of the plant's own movement. The colony of stocks has twisted itself tightly across this gap of in the rocks. Could they be protecting something? Let's see. Where the rock shelf has fallen away into the reef, the roots of the canopy above have been exposed. We could sample them with okay. The starring canopy of wool and stalks pulsate in a soft current, sunlight slipping through the gaps in its branches. High up in the wide canopy, I can see that the stalks are twisted around strange red rows. What are they holding up there? On some petals, there is a thick clump of pollen on the lower part. I wonder how this is dispersed. It seems too heavy to fall away. White single petal plants that come in a variety of hues. They appear to be primarily photosynthetic and produce a heavy, pale looking thing. I'm going to name these plants Shimmer Blooms for the way they catch the sunlight. I wish I could share this discoveries with me now. There's still so much to say. Bright petals lie in the spread of the leaf, shimmering and swaying, parting easily as I pass among the delicate forms. This canopy has many gaps between its higher stalks, as if something has fallen out of being removed from it. Fed by spores, shielded by a colony of stalks, this part of the reef seemed to have fostered the ideal condition for its own survival. Is it that another way station ahead? Mina must have built them all across the reef. Domed, mushroom-like stalks which appear to support struggling stalk colonies with a supply of special spores. With just strong resemblance to terrestrial mushrooms, I'm going to call these reef caps. In the center of the shelf is a beautiful clearing, 
drained from currents and predators. No wonder I'm having a set of police station here. I've named these table stalks after the table corals they remind me of. A log manual's back and base. Bearing canopies of stalks entwined around ripped growths. They pulse as their pores systematically open and close. In the scattered shadows of golden canopies and knee deep in shimmering petals, this way station sits silent. Okay, open up the terminal, see what data we can scrape from this place. Data released pilot console. The log suggests me I was using this as some kind of staging ground for expedition over the drop off. She was looking for something out in the ocean, something deep in the distance she locked here. Mina doesn't do things at random. The way station, the research base, this is calculated. I feel like we are already 10 steps behind her and we've barely even started. Let's get to that sea transport there. It isn't found from far from here. If we had straight north to the shelf's edge, it should be there. Uh, first we need to go back. Because there was another way to follow. And I would like to go back to explore those samples. That will be in a second. Put this somewhere here. Up here. The outcrops on this shelf are cut through with huge cracks as if they were shattered somehow. Where could have done this? Stocks have grown across this gully, reconnecting the two huge pieces of rock that looks like they are missing from the walls. One. Stress marks can still be seen along the edge of this huge rock, but it remains silent about its own history. This stock looks silently out over the debris. I wonder if Mina looked over the same view with different eyes. This bubble coat stock has large gashes inside and seems to be shriveling away. Its exposed tissue could be easy to sample. Uh. Because this wide rift, the tall rocks, rock walls of the reef's second hearing can be seen. Why is it silent? I wonder. I keep forgetting about that, and we need to store our samples. I 
the thing we've covered so far. How many samples? Let's pick up the ones. Let's take a look at this. I don't think it is. Seeing stalk tissue. Your strong grandfather is a stalk force. of the river are only just being laminated by the shimmer moons in some kind of shelter here. Now I'm not so sure. Like many of the large rocks on this shelf, this outcrop has been split, creating a passage to the east and a window to the north. Surrounded by shimmering petals, of the six dark plants outspores to discover which particles feed the plants to... We can see. Such is quite not easy to... As the shattered edge of the reef curves away to the east and burns fade and the static water grows warmer. Let me check it again. skins. It doesn't work with this. From the cover of this canopy, I can see a series of two pillars out to the east, each one top of a garden of unknown land. A strong current cuts across the east edge of shelf with the tempest haze of an open ocean stretching beyond. A swirl of sand such as this passage leads to the reef edge and the open water beyond. This side of the finger feels exposed, but thanks to its current splitting up outwards, it remains in a bubble and warm. At this tip of the shelf, the outcrops fall away to reveal an unrestricted view the vast ocean. It is both terrifying and beautiful. I see something at the edge. Is that the suit? Open, empty and half sunk in sand. Why would she leave it here? And more importantly, where did she go? It's definitely Mina's suit, but no Mina. Surely she is. Okay, let's not jump into conclusion. I want to take a look at this. It can't have been here long. Most of it is still in good condition. But how did we get out here? There's no evidence of injury. A malfunction, perhaps? What do you think? I don't think it was. Oh, no, no. No, you are right. Then she left it on purpose, abandoned it. Did she intend us to find it? Mina, what did you get yourself into here? It's better equipped than our seal, but the seals have started decaying. 
What's this? Mina has rigged up some kind of custom port perfume system. Probably two of the cards. We can use this. We'll need power source. It won't run off the suit's system. It seems like it used some kind of nutritional fuel cell. We just need to recreate it. We can use the microbial colony we sampled in the Western Rift. Okay, let's get this back to the base so I can take a better look. Mina, you better not have done something stupid. I didn't come all the way here to bury you. Let's go. Call for drone pickup. Chemical analysis of a stock scraper shell confirms that not only they are made from stock membrane materials, but a distinctive cloudy coloration comes from stocks too. Stock coloration, like most fungal coloration, is reflective of the local water acidity and the medium of and the medium the fungus grows in. This local water acidity, this variance of amber, orange, yellow, and even green pigments is passed directly to scraper shells when consumed resulting in beautiful walls and blobs of color. A scraper's shell is a living record of every stock colony it has fed on, and therefore a marker of territory and social standing. Scraper shells could be used to help study the entire reef and its shifting ecosystem. Each wall a chemical map of the local history, readable for those who can learn the significance of its forms. Close analysis of stock root networks reveals something surprising. The root networks are in fact part of symbiote, a different fungal specimen entirely, which exists within the stock bodies. This fungal symbiote provides a carbon exchange network which runs throughout the bedrock of the reef, connecting all colonies in a single web. This symbiote also produces spores which the stalks use to communicate, but these spores are edited by the stalks themselves to act as reproductive agents, information carriers and chemical delivery systems. If the stalks are able to edit the genetic signatures of these spores and their parent species, the intelligence and complexity must be way beyond what I previously theorized. Close analysis of stock spores language could reveal an entire corpus of communication. Are there stock jokes, stock histories or even stock literatures? Chemical analysis of a single stock tissue sample has confirmed the presence of yeast-like fungus and large amounts of ethanol saturated in the tissue itself. This prompts to ever think of why many creatures target the hard-to-get signal stocks as a foodstuff. While I, while I initially theorized it was due to their role as protectors of stock colonies, the significant presence of ethanol in signal stocks tissue means most creatures would feel the effects of the alcohol consumed and may get passed from grazing on signal stocks. This, in moderation, would be a favorable, even enjoyable effect for the creatures, leading them to repeatedly target signal stalks. If I remain stranded on Greece 667cc for long enough, I might need to make sure of this particular biological property myself. Table stock. Pale yellow canopies formed from many stalks entwined together, which reach impressive heights. Table stalks are part of the reef's many interlocking species of stalks, though these individuals can only be found in the eastern reef. There they tower over the other creatures, providing double shade for the life that grows around them. One of the notable features of table stalks is the rhythmic opening and closing of the pores, which provides a steady flow of water beneath their canopies. This seems to be highly beneficial to the growth of other species, 
With most table salt being surrounded by many types of stalks and other species entirely. Also notable are the bowl shaped groves by different sizes which can sit high in the table stalks canopies. Something this may help us understand the table stalks better. Analysis of a table stalk group shows a number of minerals not associated with stalk growth being extracted from the bedrock. Do the table stalk need these minerals to survive or are they using them for some other purpose? A cross section of the root shows a central chamber typical of the carbon transfer system in the other stalks. Unlike those stalks, table stalks have many subs subsidiary chambers like a bundle of wires, each carrying a particular cocktail of mineral compounds. These secondary roots are not drawing up large amount of these materials, just traces. But why? Perhaps there is some connection to those growths in the upper canopies of the table stalks. They are well secured by the stalks tight binding, but perhaps we can find one that has been dislodged. Large dome stalks which like terrestrial mushrooms will sprouts from gills on the underside of the cap. In the wider stalk ecology, reef caps appear to play the role of emergency response, growing in areas where the stalk colonies are failing or are heavily predated upon and proceeding to shower them with spores. However, these spores tend to differ from those released by other species of stalk, and that they quickly dissolve when expelled. Analyzing these spores is important to better understanding the reef scab's role. Are they reproductive spores, thus with adding newly seeded stalks to existing colonies or nutrient spores, intending to boost the health of dying or diseased individuals? Soof spores, the name by which I have come to call the reef capsis spores, don't seem to be spores at all. Unlike the modified spores of other stalks, these particles don't have any reproductive capacity. Instead, they resemble endospores, dormant bacteria reduced to dried husks which can survive for hundreds of years in toxic environments without nutrients. Endospores are incredibly tough and high in calcium and when released by the reef caps, they dissolve and transfer this calcium to the surrounding environment where it is absorbed by the local stalks. This windfall of calcium granted by the caps soft spores seem to allow stalks to augment their internal signaling and tuck them their membrane to protect them from predators, allowing them to recover rapidly. But the question remains, how do the reef caps produce these endospores? Shimmer blooms are single petal plants found primarily in the shallow waters of the East Reef. As they produce pollen as well as photosynthesize, I have classified the visible portion of these plants as petals, though they could also be thought of as leaves, serving both functions simultaneously. Shimmer blooms can be green, like most terrestrial plants, however they can also be found to be yellow, red or purple in color. The image of a patch of blossom blooms is beautiful one, and as they shift into soft points they often seem to shimmer. The lower part of their single petal features many small statements, which produce a flurry clamped pollen. Analysis of this pollen may provide some insignificant insight into their lifestyle, life cycle. Laboratory analysis of shimmer bloom pollen reveals it to be a heavy, sticky substance atypical to with waterborne distribution. Unlike on terrestrial plants like seagrass, whose pollen is distributed by water currents and it therefore long and light, shimmer blooms very cold, heavy pollen seems intended to resist distribution by current and must instead be distributed by creatures who visit the blooms. The reason for this may be the shimmer blooms tendency to grow on exposed shelves or pillars, which would risk light weight while the transported pollen being sucked into the deep ocean rather than being distributed to a viable site. By relying on creature transport, bloom pollen has a better chance of reaching on a sunlit shelf or pillar. And that is gonna be it for today. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!